Did you know that around 10% of all cats are suffering from a silent heart condition? This is the reality for cats that have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and it's a disease that often is not detected until it's too late. I'm Dr. M, this is VMC, and in today's video, we will cover everything you need to know about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, including the symptoms that you may see when this is not a silent disease, how we go about diagnosing it, treatment options, and more. So join me, you'll learn something today. So first of all, we should address what hypertrophic cardiomyopathy actually is. Now this is a disease that most often impacts our feline friends. It rarely impacts dogs and in the times that it does, it tends to be small breed dogs, not larger breed dogs. HCM is a condition that causes the heart's walls to thicken. This decreases the heart's efficacy in pumping. We don't know exactly what triggers HCM to start. We do suspect there's a genetic component as it is is more common in some feline breeds than in others. Breeds like the Maine Coon, Rag Doll, the British Shorthair, the Sphinx, and a few others. And in some cats, we have identified mutations of certain genes that contribute to heart disease. In the Maine Coon and the Rag Doll cat in particular, there is a gene that's been identified as being part of the reason as to why some cats will develop clinically significant hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So most often, it is the heart's left ventricle, which is the chamber of the heart responsible for pumping blood to the body that will be first affected and or most severely affected by hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. When the heart's muscular wall is thickened, that means that inside of the heart, there is a smaller volume, which means that the heart is less efficient at pumping blood out to the body. There will also be an abnormal relaxation of the heart muscle, which means that the chamber of the heart isn't as good at filling with blood when the heart is in its relaxed state in order to pump out that blood to the body when it contracts next. These changes can cause the heart rate to increase and or that the heart might be in an abnormal rhythm. Over time, the heart muscle will end up needing more oxygen, but it can't always get it, which can lead to the death of some of the cells in the heart muscle. As the heart cells die off, this will continue to worsen the function of the heart. In addition to all of that, because the heart is less efficient, at pumping blood out to the body, there will be symptoms associated with that as well. You can get a backup of blood in the other heart chambers or in the lungs, which can lead to fluid developing in the lungs or sometimes even in the abdomen of the cat. When we get this fluid accumulation, we call this congestive heart failure. Because the heart can be beating abnormally, this can mean that the blood flow becomes more turbulent. This can also contribute to an increased risk risk of a blood clots forming in these cats and sometimes these clots will end up getting stuck where the blood vessels split to go to the back legs or sometimes in the lungs or in the brain. One of the worst things about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is that it tends not to have very many noticeable symptoms until it's very late in the disease process. When cats are showing signs of heart failure, you might see an increased rate of breathing or labored breathing. You might see open mouth breathing or slowing down lethargy, tiredness. It's a pain because coughing is uncommon, but that's one of the things that people tend to look out for. Now, often we will see cats cats that present once they are incredibly ill and their heart is functioning incredibly poorly because up until that point they were compensating for their heart disease or they were hiding symptoms or the symptoms were subtle enough that the people didn't pick up on them. This is why even if you notice only mild symptoms, it is still worth a medical workup to find out why your cat is having these changes. A very serious and potentially life-threatening consequence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are those blood clots that I mentioned. One of the most common ways that unfortunately I end up diagnosing hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is after the cat presents because they're having trouble with their back legs and what's actually happened is that they have a blood clot that is blocking the blood flow to those legs and so the legs might not be working properly or they might feel cold. Often this is excruciatingly painful and the cats are in significant pain. 
Now the clots might also block other parts of the body. If they go into say the brain, the cat might just be dead suddenly. So sometimes the first symptom that we see with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is unfortunately a cat that's died suddenly and unexpectedly. It's truly unfortunate, but cats that have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are at a risk of sudden death. So it's something that I always warn people about after I've diagnosed this disease. Now catching the disease early and properly treating it can reduce the risks of them having things like clots or sudden death. And so let's next talk about how we diagnose HCM in our cats. Only about two thirds of cats that have HCM will have a heart murmur. This is another problem with HCM that makes it very challenging to catch on a physical exam. It's something that we could easily miss while we're listening to the chest with a stethoscope because there might not be any abnormalities to pick up. On. This is why the only way we can diagnose hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is by doing an echo or an ultrasound of the heart to look at how the heart muscle is doing. When an echo is done on a cat that has HCM, we would see thickened walls or heart walls that don't move as well as they should. However, cats that have high blood pressure or hyperthyroidism might have similar changes to their heart on echo, so we always need to check for and rule out high blood pressure and hyperthyroidism in all of our feline patients when we're looking to work up a suspected heart disease. Sometimes we will also do things like chest x-rays to look at how the lungs are doing. We might also check an electrocardiogram in order to see how the heart rhythm is doing. Sometimes we will check a blood test called a ProBNP to look for signs of heart cell death, but all of those things aren't required to diagnose HCM. They just might be recommended based on your cat's clinical signs or their other test results. Unfortunately, there is no cure for HCM, but we will address the ways that we can go about treating and managing it to the best of our ability. A veterinary cardiologist is very helpful in these situations. They're usually the ones who do the echoes anyway, and they can help to formulate a plan specifically for your cat based on what they need. The treatment goals are to help control the heart rate and to reduce the risk of clotting. We will also do our best to reduce any symptoms of congestive heart failure and fluid accumulation if your cat is experiencing that. Most of the long term treatments are given by mouth in these situations. We tend to use medications to control heart rate like beta blockers or medications for blood pressure. And if the veterinary cardiologist feels your cat is at an increased risk of having blood clotting issues, then we will also add in medication to reduce those risks. We will also sometimes adjust the nutrition that your cat is being fed. We would also do our best to reduce stress for your cat in order to help reduce their symptoms and help them manage. We will also do regular monitoring. Monitoring for things like respiratory rate or breathing rate are one of the most sensitive things that we have in order to help us check for if the heart is decompensating when you're just looking at your cat at home. Unfortunately, none of the medications or treatments that I've mentioned will stop the progression of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but they can help your cat to manage with their heart disease for as long as possible. Now the prognosis or predicted outcome for cats with HCM is highly variable. If we happen to diagnose your cat before they become symptomatic and they have a milder case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it's possible that they could have a wonderful long life with only mildly compromised heart function. However, other cats will have their HCM progress or if we diagnose it when it's more advanced, the prognosis is not as good. And unfortunately, HCM is most commonly a progressive disease. Sadly, for cats that are diagnosed because they have a serious clot, unfortunately the prognosis for those patients is very poor and often humane euthanasia is chosen because the clot is causing excruciating pain and we just don't have good results. Even if we can get rid of that clot, there is such a high risk that your cat will have another clot within the near future that treatment is often not advised in those situations, which is devastating for everybody involved. 
As you know, I pound the drum for prevention every chance that I get. And in this situation, there are some things that we can do. If a cat is going to go through breeding, then it is absolutely crucial that we screen them with an echo and with genetic testing for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. If they are at risk, they should not be bred. Regular vet visits and screening early on in life for cats that are of a higher risk breed is also important. And so if you have one of those breeds that has a higher risk for HCM, you should see a veterinary cardiologist regularly and have them as part of your veterinary team. It's also important that we keep cats a lean body condition score and that we feed them properly formulated research-based diets that meet WSABA guidelines. Unfortunately, despite researchers' valiant efforts, we still don't fully understand which cats get HCM and why we need more research in this topic. And there's no treatment currently to undo hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or even to slow down its progression. The best we can do is manage our cat's symptoms once we know they have it. As I say so very often for our cats, we need more research. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and share it with someone you know who has a cat, especially if they have a cat that's at a higher risk for HCM. Feel free to check out the other videos for more research-based best practices information on how to care best for your pets. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye.